Hello and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully, your host. And today I wanted to share with you another recipe for natural dye. Um, this is going to be for another shade of yellow, uh, yellow being the most common um, dye pigment available in plant material. Um, but this is a more subtle shade of yellow and it comes from a plant called mullion. Now, mullion grows here on our property like a weed. Um, obviously nothing growing today because we've just had another big snowstorm. Um, but in the summertime, it starts out as a little um, shrubby looking plant, almost looks like lamb's ear. Um, it has those sort of pale green fuzzy leaves in a little clump. And then it sends up this big spike um, up from the middle of the plant and that spike eventually will bear bright yellow flowers and set about a zillion seeds and then um, seed itself. So, um, and I was not a fan of this plant for a long time. When we first got our sheep, I realized they did not like to eat it. And so Rick and I were desperately out in the pasture pulling that up and trying to get it to not reseed itself um, and take over where we were trying to grow grass. Um, but it turns out it does have a use, and it does make a nice pale yellow color. Um, you get that color from the leaves, and so uh, when I'm out harvesting mullion, trying to get it not to grow in my pasture, I can just pull up the entire plant, pop the root off, and save the leaves. And then, like goldenrod and jewelweed and some of these other preparations I've mentioned um, in previous posts, you can just simmer those leaves down to make your dye bath, um, sift them out, and put your prepared yarn in, simmer it for you know an hour or so, and then let it cool. And it does seem to set up pretty well um, and be fairly color fast. Now again, this um, is just going to give you sort of a pale yellow shade, but I think it could work well in a color work type of scenario where you're looking either for a very pale background color or uh, maybe an accent color that's not too dramatic to go with some other contrasting colors. So um, it may not be very exciting on, on its own, but I think it could play well with other, um, other colors in that kind of a scenario. I think the other use for a mullion dyed yarn, this pale yellow, um, could also be as a base for an over dye. So if you were trying to get a very soft shade of coral, um, you could try over dyeing it with matter. And if you wanted a very soft shade of like a sage green or something, perhaps a dip in indigo um, over top of the mullion, because it's not very saturated, um, should give you like a nice sort of pastel color. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying out some of those ideas um, this summer when the weather warms up and I can um, continue with these dye experiments. Once again, um, as I mentioned in each of these dye recipe episodes, if you are trying any of these dye methods or um, experiments in your own home, I would love to see your results. I'd love to know what worked and what didn't um, because I'm still learning too and I like to try new things. So do let me know um, how those are working out for you. Leave a comment here on the video or on the accompanying blog post, which is linked in the show notes. And again, that, um, that blog post will have more details on the exact method that I used. So thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy these videos and tell a friend. Um, I'm trying to get at least 100 subscribers um, and we're almost there. We're in the, the mid 70s as of this video. So um, keep subscribing, keep watching and let me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks so much for tuning in. Cheers.